we expect a lot to be happening over the past, uh, over the next couple of weeks. And of course, the weekend was action packed. Politicians, you know, doing their thing. And this is a season. All right. So today we want to talk about matters of politics. One thing we need to remind ourselves, lest we forget 2007, 2008. All right. Today we want to talk about some of the utterances, leadership and integrity. And in studio with me, I have got Wakili Ochiangor, who is an advocate of the High Court. Karibu sana, Wakili. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Asante sana. As well as uh, Tabitha Ogutu joining me via Zoom from Siaya County and Hamisi Mboga. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, from Mombasa to Siaya. How amazing is that? Tabitha, morning. Good 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 morning. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. fantastic. Um, um, today we want today to talk, we about, talk about, yeah. about issues um, leadership and integrity, of course, based on what happened over the weekend. Um, the utterances, much as the politicians are saying that they were put out of context, but nonetheless, it was a statement that went out there and in the public domain. We all know what happened in 2007, 2008. It started just like that. And before we knew it, over 1,300 people died and over 600,000 were internally displaced. Whichever way we look at it, a word was uttered and it sparked a national uproar. Let's begin up to that point. And before then, let's take a look at some of the reactions uh, from the leaders uh, based on what Senator Mithika Linturi said. Director. All right, uh, we will get you that clip as soon as we get it. We want to get the reaction. There we have it. Ngini walikuwa na hitu wa kwe kwe. Ata kwe kwe, ilangoa. Ngini nasema ni madoa doa. Itaki kuona. Ukisikia tuka hiyo kirudi istena kama jana. Tunasema hapana. Kwezi. Because we don't want our leaders well about wanaeleza uh, fitina kama vile tuliona mtu jana akiongea hiyo si maokeo mazuri kwa kiongozi tunataka peaceful election tukue na amani Putu All right so that happened over the weekend in Eldoret Sports Ground and starting with you here Wakili Leadership and integrity, this is something that um, we cannot downplay now that we are in that particular season. But as politicians would say, they were overtaken by the event. The moment you have the microphone, they, you know, have leave of their senses, right? Yeah, they say they were quoted out of context. Mm -hmm. That's what they always say. But I want to say uh, words. Words have a lot of influence. You see, even in the good book, they say that in the beginning was the word. Yes. They could have said many other things. And um, words that were uttered over the weekend by the senator are most unfortunate and must be called out so. Even though they say that uh, it is only the dev uh, God and himself who knows the intentions of a man. Not even the devil knows the intentions of a man. But once the words were uttered, what we the ripple effect it has on the common mananchi or the masses, the, uh, the general populace, in Rift Valley, especially in Rift Valley, you see the timing of those, uh, those words can be really construed to mean something else. As you said rightly, we've not forgotten, not only 207, uh, mm. even before that, 1992, exactly, yes. around uh, 1997, there have been issues in the Rift Valley. Yeah. And it is the last place that we expect somebody to utter such uh, utterances that are supposed to be, that can be construed to be divisive it can be construed to say that people who do not belong to that place mm. should be taken out of that uh, uh, particular 
area. Yes. And that is wrong because if you argue like that, almost every other town in this country, major towns, yes. uh, is cosmopolitan. There are different tribes, different um, ethnicities, and people are coexisting. Mm. And uh, if you call them Madobo, even if you meant well, yeah. what has gone out there is some people will say, oh, we, are not, we do not belong here, mm. and therefore we should be taken out. Words, as it were, even in 1994, about Rwanda, mm. they said something about Nyanza. Yes, the cockroaches. The cockroaches. Yeah. And even in the Holocaust, during the, the German, if mm. you go to the German, you see Holocaust. And those such words were criminalized. The Nyanza in the uh, post-genocide uh, Rwanda, mm. and even uh, the Nazi flag is criminalized in German. So even in this country, uh, we know what Maduro has done to us, yeah. and we do not want to take us back there. Mm. We therefore condemn uh, the utterances by the uh, senator mm -hmm. as most unfortunate. And uh, the Nini is not just enough. I think uh, the, the apology that he made is not enough and yeah. we should have uh, consequences of mm. actions. And of course he yeah. was arrested over the weekend yeah. and uh, he will appear before the, the uh, NCIC on Wednesday. Yeah, yes. Yeah, he should appear there. Just... Uh, to serve as a lesson to others. Yeah. And people, are, we urge politicians to be guarded in what they say. Mm. They might take it lightly, but it means a lot to common one. Uh, you see, when people were butchering each other, they were just people who knew each other. Mm -hmm. they, they buy from the same shops, they go to the same churches, mm. people were even banned in churches, just because of such terms, like you do not belong here. Yeah. I want to encourage us that we all belong in, to this country, and we need to, we can live and work anywhere we are, without fear of favor, yeah. despite our political differences. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, miss the, I mean, it happened, and based on what happened, you know, several leaders have come out to condemn the utterances, but they're saying that you know, he was trying to refer to some of the political formations in that particular region. You know, we all know the six-piece suit where, you know, in defense of his words, the senator and, you know, his allies said that, you know, that's what he meant. He meant that in that particular region, they wanted a straight UDA kind of a suit. But we all remember what happened in 2007 where at the ICC, the word Madoadoa also was mentioned it came out quite openly that the word maduador was used so it reminds us of the past is that so hamisi yes, and, uh, very strikingly you when you're beaten by a snake in my country where i come from you will even fear a reed on the ground even a rock you would mm. think that it's a snake and that the word maduador was used in uh, uh, during that time to make sure that those people who don't belong to that place are moved. And you see, it, it reminds us it reminds us of the terrible time. Those of us in Mombasa felt it. I know it was happening there, but also here, people who are fearful, people moved into hotels waiting to be airlifted to their country. It was a terrible time and we shouldn't allow it. So, the, the moment you go to the platform as a politician, I know it's sweet to talk to a very big crowd you want to move them but the words are very very important and from now on i think it's, it's better it has happened now that we can maybe 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 people can intervene but if it happened one month or two months before before elections things could be bad now if uh, the crowd did not understand uh, uh, the senator and they understood to remove anybody and you remember, it's not only the senator, somebody else mentioned names, so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. That was bad, because I've seen another clip where names were mentioned. Mush, Bush, Mushra must go back to, uh, to, to their home. You know, those kind of not very good on a platform, and they have spoiled the party for the deputy president. And he should go back to revisit his team. And it's not only Lidhuri. We see many, many of the politicians uh, on the platform, on both sides of, of the game. Uh, their temperature is coming out, their language is not palatable, and therefore they should change. When you want to convince people, don't use the bad words. Uh, the, the, if you use a, bad, a word like mboga, mboga is a normal word, but if you use it badly, I'll be offended because I'm called mboga. It depends on how you, you coin your, your language. If you say Mboga is good, I feel good, even if it is not Mboga me. 
But if you say these terrible mbogas, then you already so interpretation matters in English, in language. And it depends on the voice and the time and the period. And he asked the whole crowd, mm. the crowd yes, yes, unaweza. So how would they do it? Physically, uh, emotionally, if you wanted the what the full suit or all, all all UDA, you should just say that. I mean, language, my brother, is so crucial when we are dealing with uh, people's sensitivity and lives. Mm. Yeah, and uh, Tabitha, uh, we we can we can easily assume that uh, you know. Um, Senator Linturi just represented perhaps a very small clique of what, you know, legislators are thinking out there. Perhaps his came out openly. Most definitely. I, I honestly, first of all, will say that um, uh, what uh, Senator Linturi did is an abuse to the freedom of expression. Mm. And also, they are taking us back to the, to the dark times that Kenyans we're in. We are trying to move from that period where we had um, a very heated post-election violence in 2007 and a subsequent repeat in a few years of elections that we have had. In the efforts that we are having as a government or even as a country to unify all Kenyans, irrespective of their tribes, and then our leaders are coming out so boldly to try and, you know, um, make Kenyans view others as madowadoa or sort of, you know, um, not fit enough to be in a particular community. What are they sending as a message to the rest of the country? Because if it's madowadoa they meant, then I feel like it was a particular attack to, sub, uh, to, to particular communities in this country. Remember, even the community in which they were at that particular day, some of them are settled in these particular places where the individuals are being called Madoadoa. Yes. There is nobody who is a Madoadoa in this country. Uh, these are some of the things that, as a country, are trying to move us a few steps behind as much as we're trying to you know, uh, go in front and, and even face this monster of um, tribalism and ethnicity. So as leaders, as crop of leaders that we saw in that particular rally, they even make us question what type of leadership or even who, what kind of a leader they had in that particular place. Then that means they're not unified in the sense that Kenya is what they stand for. They do not stand for the people. They're basically wanting to you know, be seen as people who are voices and they can make noise. And I think we have so many crop of leaders who are like that, where... Um, they are seen to be very boldly talking, just loud voices and things like that. Content is particularly zero. And that really showed up on that particular day. So we really need moving forward. I, can, I really want to commend the government for what I saw them doing, you know. These particular people must be brought, um, you know, to book and they have to be accountable for inciting the citizens of Kenya. Because you already you are seeing that a country, this country is at a place whereby the elections, uh, you know, traditionally the year of elections, you know, politics, are, are, you know, um, have really heightened and that there is that heat in every county. And yeah. already they're trying to incite people and they already know better, honestly. I think, Victor, it's, it's a sad state of affairs to wake up in uh, as a country, as Kenya, knowing our history and what mm. we are trying to move out. Yes. Uh, Wakili, Wakili, this clearly tests our sense of leadership and integrity. Yeah. You see, when you are a leader, the, it is said that to whom much is given, mm. much is expected. Yes. You see, if I said such things, okay, but it will still, uh, even if, uh, you see, the crowd was charged and everybody was there, mm -hmm. as a leader, you have to be measured in your approach to issues, whatever you want to go outside there consequences of your words you yes. have to take care of what you're saying without uh, you see you saying you are you meant uh, six piece there's nothing further from the truth if you wanted to say that that is something you can just say we've had it being said by other politicians that we need a straight uh, suit without having uh, uh, you see these other political parties but with our history i think uh, the good senator needed to be a bit more careful mm. with these utterances but i'm glad that we are speaking about it before then so that it can be arrested we hope that the authorities and the people who are in charge will deal with it firmly because if it is played with you can always play with a small fire and yeah. you see it is always these small fires that uh, 
always come to be great ones and mm. consumes us. Mm. And um, you see, uh, I think it should have also been uh, by the party leaders who are there, or even after that event, the party leaders uh, of that uh, particular, the UDA, mm -hmm. should have come out to yes. condemn it. But you see, it is taken as normal, and most of them are actually annoyed. I had some other MPs were saying that uh, they were quoted out of context. Instead of offering apologies, mm. they were saying that they were quoted out of context and that the other politicians are using it to fuel unnecessary uh, acrimony between yeah. the communities. Mm. And again, I want to urge other politicians. You know, there are people who also now want to fuel it, want to use it um, in as much as... Uh, yeah, campaign uh, capital. Yeah, they now want to uh, gain, take gain with that one, and they want to now push it, push it. You know, the more you talk about it, the more mm. people hear about it. Yeah. I think people should turn down on the same. Let the authorities that are supposed to deal with it, deal with it. We have to condemn it the way we are condemning it here now, mm. but we don't need to other politicians to mm. also take uh, political mileage yeah. with the same uh, utterances. Mm. Yeah. Al allow me to uh, read some of the tweets here, uh, which was... Uh, Two gentlemen, that is lawyer Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi and David D, who is an economist, who said that uh, I'm quoting um, uh, li, uh, quoting one of that is lawyer Ahmed Nasir who says that Kalenjins in Rift Valley, like all Kenyans, have a constitutional right to vote for a presidential candidate of their choice, other than DP Ruto. It is on that note that we must all condemn the Maduadoa comment by Senator Linturi. Let the people decide. That is according to Ahmed Dasir uh, there. And David D said that Kenyan politicians suffer from microphone disease. Microphone plus crowd, and they take leave of their senses. <laughs> um, Hamisi, coming to you, it comes to a point where, you know, we've, have we forgotten to have campaigns of ideologies and, you know, proper issues? That is exactly what I wanted to say because when I stopped, I wanted to say, let's use, let's go back to the policies. What are your policies that you want to attract us to vote for you? What are your plans? What, and then you can even break it down. What do you want to do with the, for the youth? What do you want to do for the elderly? What do you want to do? You know, people will listen to say, this touches me, this affects me, so this is the right. But when we use uh, uh, those kind of languages, and uh, um, Wakili said we shouldn't talk about it, but uh, the more we look at it, there is a problem. If you're in Ripti Valley, you want to remove Madoadoa, call it whether politically or not politically. Suppose you people come to Mombasa and we don't have a candidate. Uh, do we remove Madoadoa? You know, you can, it, the implication is so bad. If you go to Nyanza, who is Madoadoa? If you go to Mount Kenya, who is Madoadoa? in any sense, in whatever sense you want to put it. So I want to support my, my colleague uh, Wakili. Then, like uh, those other people, let's keep it open. This is a Kenyan uh, election. Everybody should ask the, pe the Kenyan people to vote for, for them. Whether you get one vote or 100 votes, the Kenyans have made a decision. And we're saying Kenyans. We're not saying people from your region. Uh, one time I listened to somebody from West and say, put it in one basket. So if you put one basket to ANC in Western, do you expect ANC to get anything from from uh, from Nyanza, from course? From, so let's open it, say we are campaigning on these policies, we are requesting the Kenyan people to consider us, we, we are here to be able to make good policies, look at security, there are so many issues you can touch, look at education, look at health, you know, these topical things that touch majority of the Kenyans. Look at poverty. Uh, there are so many things to talk about to attract the Kenyan populace than using a language. And also, the, the language of hitting each other, the very bad words politically on the platform. Mm. These guys, uh, this group, you know, those are very strong words that add no value to your, to your campaign. So, some of the statements from the politicians keep us away. In fact, it's better let them talk so that we know whom, yeah. whom to elect. Because some of them, the languages will not fit into the person I want to sit on that big chair. Absolutely. Tabitha, as a country, I, I, um, somebody would argue that we've become of age, but 
are, are we not just sitting back and sometimes think of the repercussions of utter, our utterances? I think lost. Well, can just pick it from that yeah, point. Just coming. Uh, yeah. uh, let uh, my colleague not quote me out of context. I did not say that we do not to <laughs> need to speak about these things. I mean, so don't quote him out of context as well. <laughs> I was talking about politicians yes. who are now uh, using the same mm. to get political mileage. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying. But we need to speak about these things. Mm. And I said the earlier the better for us. So that uh, and I said they be dealt with family. Yeah. So we need to speak about it. You see, uh, I have a friend called Professor Chino Achebe. Mm. He says that uh, the reason why uh, flies are buried with corpses is because they have nobody to advise them. Mm -hmm. And most politicians are just like the flies. And the problem is not that, it's not that uh, the utterances will only affect them, mm. it will also affect other people. So we need to advise them even though they think they know it all you know most of them don't need advice yes even as late as now some of them are still saying that what was said is okay i mean some advocates forum i saw people arguing mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. and against you see when you sit back in your houses and it is good you can be in your offices and arguing about these things mm -hmm. there are people on the ground when they hear such words it reminds them of what happened to them. Yeah. Some people, have, they have not reconstructed their families. Uh, some people's property was still lost. They have not regained it. Mm. And when they remember Madado, which was said then, and they hear it now, of course it brings fear. Yeah. As uh, my friend said, that uh, when you first, when you're bitten by a snake once, mm -hmm. when you see a rope, you, you fear even a rope. Just run, run away. Yeah. Uh, so you see, we need to be cultured. Mm. We, we have come of ages. Kenya is doing pretty well, but I need, we need not to antagonize each other with such things as Madoa Doa or any other thing. Because as we have said, in my home area, there's a lot of people who do not come from that area. Mm. And you see, it will cascade into even uh, regions. Yeah. Because you see, if, if we are, maybe me and you come from Karachuanyo, mm -hmm. there are still laws in Karachuanyo whom they say are not from. Same yeah, yeah. If you are voting for the MP, you will realize this clan is against that clan. If mm. you come to the MC, MCA, you will hear that uh, is from this door and not this door. So if we say Madoa door, it will always go down. Yeah, yeah. Even from family, even in my own own home, they'll say this is from this house. Mother, maybe your father has two wives. Mm. They say this is from that house and this is from that house. So I don't think we need to incite people unnecessarily yeah. because it will bring the dungeon that we do not want to go back to. Mm. And therefore not only to even as you said, other politicians, maybe yes. it's just representing uh, what other people also think. Mm. And some people are planning it so that they uh, can use it uh, to propel them politically. Mm. We want to urge our politicians that we have only one Kenya and we do not want to this, uh, you see, the country to go into disarray. We don't want the murders that we saw, which were really unnecessary. Yeah. Innocent people losing their lives just for you to gain politically. Mm. Even if you gain everything and lose the souls of those who are supposed to lead, then what you are not you gain out of it. Yeah. All right. Mm. And Hamisi, this brings some sharp focus. The effects of the commission, the, the CIC, all right, on how to prosecute some of these cases. We had a discussion here with the CIC chair, that is Professor Kobia, sometimes back, and he said that, you know, they are contemplating of having that wall of shame. But is that enough to tame these loose tongues? It's not enough, but it's better. It's better than nothing. What, what we, we were expecting is, we want to see the list of the guys, not guys, the list of the politicians who were saying these bad things to, to, the, to their uh, Kenyan uh, fellows. Uh, but also the other arms, the other institutions that are supposed to deal with specific uh, legal issues, uh, security issues, to check their form. But let's see the list. We want to see the list from number one to, to the last of those people who have been using the Bulgar language to be able to incite other people or to abuse other, other, other people. So that we learn the culture of persuasion. Politics especially is uh, an art of persuasion positively towards your objectives. And therefore when you use bad language, you are not you are persuading them, but uh, maybe wrongly. So I think the institutions that they deal with these issues should really wake up. We want to see examples. Uh, if it's court, let's see the process of court where it, it has gone. 
if somebody says uh, uh, I apologize, who want to see apology? Apology is not only word, apology is action also. We can see, oh, that guy said something, but I think he's been sorry and we can, we can see movement. But if you apologize today and tomorrow you're on the platform and you're saying worse things, then we have to worry about the, the kind of system that we, we want to have. So, and also the, the issue, the politics of uh, these people, you, you, you want to campaign, but you're separating groups. Mm. You're saying, I want to campaign for this, I want to help this particular group. We are all Kenyans, we are all your constituents. If you want to do something, let it cut across. Otherwise, you leave people out. If you consider, for example, aged people like me, if you say you want only to assist the youth who have not been employed, those of yeah. us who have worked for this country and now we are old, you want to forget us that we, we deserve to be considered? So the, the moment you speak, people are seeing different, uh, are receiving different messages from the same person, from the same statement. Mm. So like my brother said, let's get more advisors to our politicians. Uh, mm -hmm. Get a professional people, get old people, get young people, get ladies, uh, get, you know, you need this group so that they can brief you as you go on in your platforms. Yeah, yeah. Just And just to mention that, uh, Kakamega Senator Clefas Malala is also set to appear before the National Cohesion and Integration Commission, that is NCIC today, uh, to record a statement over the remarks he said uh, sometimes last month over the Bukungu Stadium meeting. Uh, we remember he said that, uh, you know, quote unquote, that bedroom, uh, Kakamega was his bedroom and nobody was allowed to go there. So he's also set to appear before the NCIC today to record a statement as well as uh, Senator Mithika Linturi. We are waiting to see whether he will uh, appear before court of law. But before I come to you, Akili, Tabitha, this sounds like a litmus test for the NCIC as far as these are concerned. You know, absolutely, absolutely, we can say that. Mm. I think, Victor, uh, as well, uh, as a country, I think this should begin at uh, at a stage from the political parties themselves, you know. Mm. Uh, what are some of the of the measures they have in place that when uh, their members, or members of these political parties, you know, violate the freedom of speech through incitement of Kenyans, what are some of uh, the laid out um, repercussions that they have at the political parties uh, level uh, that will see that these people, you know, or, you know, um, are brought to book because mm. it's not enough to be put on the wall of shame. After that, some of our politicians don't even care, you know. They don't care yeah. whether you're bringing them in the least. They, they, it's not even their business. Now, we need for them to feel the impact. And that impact, I think, the party leaders and needs to take this as a prime task and even as we do the amendments in the political um, uh, the political parties bill of this country some of, some of these things i think we want to see that uh, as, as as political parties they're also key in wanting to ensure that they also give their own part of uh, you know uh, sort of discipline to this kind of politicians mm. um regardless of where we come from as kenyans i think that um our politicians, some sort of, not all of them, but many of them, they lack um, the purpose that we ought to see in them. We have so many issues affecting us as a country that if you were to go to a crowd of Kenyan citizens and talk to them about, I think they will be old if you give them solutions, you know. If you come to, for example, um, we have the youths and, uh, and many people, not youths alone, experiencing unemployment in this country, you know, come out straight and tell us a politician, this is this and this and this is what I'm offering, just in case, if we get this particular leadership space. Mm. But when you want to be, you know, it, it shows that this politician, like Lin Turi, I really doubt the school of thought that this particular, um, uh, is, I, I, I even call him an honorable member of parliament because it's not, there's no honor in what he says. And uh, one thing that uh, Victor shocked me is how he was walking, like it was a Mandela moment when he was, he, he was you know, handcuffed. He was walking very, very energetic and he was feeling very victorious. Um, not apologetic at all. I think, I think until he, he come to Kenyan Street and say that what he said is something that was unpleasant and uh, we did not need to hear it from uh, somebody of his stature, and then, um, uh, like I've, I've had my fellow panelists say that we need to move away from it. I think it's not just your time to move away from this discussion. Not until they come out 
and also the party leader okay. and the UDA leader to come okay. and apologize for this particular thing, yeah. All right. Uh, I think we need to take a break at that particular point. And we come back, we're still going to talk more on that and our way forward. Remember uh, that he was arrested over the weekend and Cleophus Malal, that is senator of Kakamega, is also said to appear before the National Cohesion and Integration Commission. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. welcome back we still welcome your feedback and your comments as far as this discussion is concerned um Wakili, coming back to you uh, i asked hamisi and tabitha the role of ncic and ncic in their mandate they say that they don't have the prosecutorial powers to deal with these issues perhaps from 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 um, an advocate's point of view what do you think should be done to tame such kind of uh, you know utterances in future uh, thank you for that. You see, uh, the NIC, their work is to do the investigation like they are now doing, mm -hmm. as they've invited uh, Lenturi and Senator Malala to their offices. Then from there, they love to hand it over to other government departments, especially the DPP, to prosecute. I think they need to have more teeth yes. to bite. Because people do not even fear. They say they will go there, then after that, what? They need to be given uh, legal capacity to prosecute their matters, mm. the manpower to do it, or even if they hand it over to the DPP, the DPP should take it seriously so that we see people who have actually been convicted. Not convicted and sentenced. You see, most of the people can be given fines. Yeah. And most of these guys have money. And if you see what is required, if you go to the law, you see what is um, the, the sentence that is supposed to be meted on people of such kind of hate speech is very minimal. Mm. So people know, they already know the consequences that they are able to bear it. I think it should be made painful for somebody to who utters such kind of, uh, who makes such kind of utterances so that they can be taken in without option of the fine because of course they have money and they will always pay and something about the shame mm -hmm. uh, most of our politicians uh, are shameless uh, as i was saying earlier you see some of them have been catapulted into those offices mm -hmm. because of very very weird utterances some people through abuse, they've managed to come into leadership. So if we have the list of shame good enough, uh, it will be there for history. History will record it. But there are also people who see them as heroes. As uh, uh, Ogutu was saying rightly, when Nani, uh, the senator was arrested, yeah. he was walking majestically. And there are people who feel like he is there now, Mandela in quotes, mm -hmm or they are political supremo because of those utterances. So even Kenyans, uh, and even it is an African problem, so we always praise those who are supposed to be demonized and demonize those who are supposed to be praised. And uh, there's an, this example where there was a, a minister in Uganda who had been arrested overseas for theft. When he came back into his country, you see, the countrymen went to the airport and they were singing for him and praising him and saying that while other men still in shillings, you're still in dollars. Mm. So it is also cultural problems. What people see, we follow politicians and everything that they say to some constituents, they think it is right, yeah. which is very wrong because if we get affected, you see, if you say, again, back to Madoa Doa, mm. the country, everybody is everywhere in this country. Yeah. There's every tribe in every place. So if you say Madoa Doa, there are also people from that region who are in other places. Mm. So we need to be very careful with our utterances. Absolutely. And I mean, see, in some countries, when a leader utter such kind of words you know to an extent they are even barred from contesting for any elective position but that is not what's happening here in the country yeah, that's what we're saying, like um, my colleague is saying the punishment or the, the remedy is not uh, big enough so it's not mm -hmm. strong enough to stop people from repeating because we don't have those sanctions for example if you will just give an example of about four people who have uh, been inciting people and block them from even participating in the coming elections. In future, you don't, you don't stop them for good, but you say you missed out, uh, like in parliament, you missed out five, five sessions. Uh, these people should also miss out one election so that they know what they did is not good for, for, for the people. So I agree with you. The sanctions are not enough. 
to deter these people from repeating the same thing that they have been doing it or sponsoring people to do the same thing that they have been doing. And it's going to be bad if it reaches, it reaches the youth. The youth are many and uh, easily to mobilize. And the moment you create that situation and uh, you, you mobilize a few youth, they can destroy many, many, many places and other things. You see what is happening in school. Maybe it's one or two students, but the students and the whole system loses. So we need to check out these people who are I I isolated dangerous because they can stop uh, uh, services for a long time and they can affect even the lives of other people. We must address this one and just be taken very, very seriously. Uh, some of us, I don't know, my lawyer friend, if they miss out, for example, these elections, is it a human rights issue? Because they also uh, are creating issues to to affect humans so why don't they lose something like that or bad from even standing bad from campaigning you know i don't know i don't know but i'm suggesting a stronger uh, remedy a stronger uh, sanction to be able to deter their actions mm. yeah oh, you what can you have a challenge there <laughs> uh, he, <laughs> he was saying that uh, if these people are arrested or given uh, tougher conditions, mm. then it might be a human rights issue. But you see, you enjoy those rights. Your rights sense where other people begin. Mm -hmm. So it is not you alone. Yeah. Yeah. So the that's why we have the law. Because if it was just left that anybody can say anything, anybody can do anything, mm. then we will fall into anarchy. Um, and uh, the falcon, as we said, mm. will not hear the falconer. So issues of human rights for those who have broken the law are not coming into play. Yeah. Because they also affect other people's Human rights. Yes. So when you the, the, the purpose of criminal law is actually to deter. Mm. Uh, mm. So they need to we need to have tougher laws. We need to have um, let it be painful to the person who utters those things. Yeah. Yeah. Let it not be made light so that they can uh, pay the fines and go away. Mm. So I think uh, there need to be conversion around that legislation so that uh, even if disbarring them, so that's not as painful, you see, they, they, they need to go to, you see, you see the way people fear jail. Yeah. Yeah. We just saw the other day, uh, the Nani was uh, supposed to go to committee and uh, he did not go, but it sent some <laughs> message. So even these politicians, mm -hmm. they should those who have been taken through the process, I mean they should be taken through the process. Yeah. Yeah. They have a right to be heard. It is a natural right. Mm. So they need to be heard. But once they are convicted, the sentence need to be equivalent to what they are causing because mm. death, I mean, that is the highest exactly. uh, crime that can be uh, uh, yeah. can happen. Tabitha, let me just bring you in here. Uh, perhaps, you know, we can say that some of these legislators are used to these corridors. Today, you speak a word. You're summoned by the NCIC, you go, write a record a statement, walk out, address the media, and life continues. Wakili says that, you know, there should be some tougher penalties to, you know, such people, perhaps to which will, you know, like, for example, taking them to committee maximum prison. But in your own perspective, what do you think should be happening, even from the Mwanainchi? Because Mwanainchi have the powers in their hand, the power of the vote. Uh, that's a very good question. I think you've asked Victor this particular point as we discuss this particular issue of, uh, of incitement mm. and um, poor actions from our leaders. Um, for me, I think uh, according to the Constitution of Kenya, nobody is above the Constitution. And the violation of one human right, because human rights are interdependent, then in some other way, then you find that um, um, those other rights are also affected. So that means, as you even have the conversation on, uh, somebody will argue that um, he's also having his own human rights and things like those ones. Mm. Um, the, with the fact that he violated the rights of other Kenyans when he uttered those words, that means even him, his rights can be curtailed. Yes. Um, I think introducing more stringent measures is, is a way towards the right direction. And that is why I mentioned earlier that um, at the political party's level, I think they should also take up this with the seriousness it really deserves. Because um, um, if they can, uh, uh, like, like what Amisi was saying, uh, just um, 
a few minutes ago if they can be bad to even you know vie for these political seats in just one political season and then it will really serve as a good example for the rest of politicians who want to just go into a spree of talking and talking to the citizens of Kenya at the expense of what we will we, we will identify uh, we, we will refer to as national integration uh, we cannot afford to you know as a country uh, be divided along those lines at this particular mm. time so number one i think of the political parties i think um they need to kind of have uh, this kind of legislations at their own level uh, the government is doing um something about it but i also feel that um even in our own constitution we should have uh, some of these uh, particular uh, precautionary measures um uh, written down that can be followed just in case some of these things happen i, I do not want to, to to say whether or not um these people will be left out to go scot free which is what we are about to see but then i always ask myself a question as a country i wish have these people the, the, the level of uh, um of, of let's say um uh, discipline or uh, uh just that they're supposed to be to be given and and for those people who felt that they were violated have uh, they received uh the justice that they're supposed to have if that has not been served in both cases where uh, the victim at this particular place with senator Nituri and even clear for Malala who has been seen to want to you know I don't know if he wants to take a particular part of Kenya to himself and, and tell us here the title deed I think I think no no Kenyan no Kenyan owns any part of this country and therefore we have the freedom of movement the freedom of expression as enshrined in the constitutional rights mm. of our, 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 our tradition constitution so uh, we want to see this particular two leaders being held to book um being uh, brought forth and and being served uh, with what we as kenyans are respecting and that is justice in accordance to our kenyan law and as victims of uh, or, or the people who felt that they were targeted i think i have a message to pass to them that let us not also you know try and have the spirit of hatredness in us or want to revenge and want to you know also try and say if they say that you know we feel that we're the madawado in this particular community when yeah. you start doing this in other parts of the country i want us to be to, to to know that you know even in the market we always have uh, some mad people and these are the mad people in the market where we expect that we have the highest level of uh, mm. integrity and even uh literacy so they like yeah. that and those are the bad people so we should not you know you know emulate them because they're not what we call our leaders thank you right um um wakili i'm so sure that you've traversed this particular country for different reasons we can all agree that kenya is a peaceful country right very right you see uh, actually that's what i've been doing recently uh you see elections for the law society of kenya yes. due, uh, in a month uh, personally i'm also vying mm, oh, all i the want best, to represent we'll, <laughs> thank we'll, you we'll tell us more about that shortly. i want to represent nairobi advocates there yeah. so i've been going through the country i've been to lindi mombasa kisumu all of them mm -hmm. yeah there's beauty this country is beautiful and people are peaceful so you see and let, until uh, it is said that uh, peace is like good health mm -hmm. until you lose it you do not know the real importance of yeah. it i've been going everywhere you meet your colleagues you don't care about their tribes you just tell them your policies and then they welcome you there so if people do not see that as a beautiful thing and they want us to degenerate into anarchy mm. then they should be dealt with very firmly kenya is a peaceful country kenya is a loving country you go to central you get to enjoy the culture there you come mm. to our you come to you see that is the beauty of it there's beauty in diversity yes and we should as a country uh build on that as opposed to destroying that you, you see when, when you talk of you know you know you know the legal profession is one of the most guarded professions in the world one little thing can actually throw you off the bar but True. then now mm -hmm. in politics it's like everything goes yeah in politics you see some you you re, you realize that uh, as i was saying some people have been into those offices yes because of their bad mouths yeah and people support them we also have to talk to uh, the common on the followers mm. that you do not really need to follow people blindly even if they're leave, leading you into uh, hell holes mm. so our the constituencies as uh, nani has put it very well you see do not take do not take advice from politicians line who can sink mm. it is you is going to be affected when this country burns you might not see these politicians some of them have visas ready yeah. but some of us will be here mm -hmm. we will have to face the consequences so before we follow blindly let us ask ourselves what is it 
what is the need for us mm. yeah if chaos broke out today you might not even leave your house to go and buy food but these people can go elsewhere but we have this country so we have to guard ourselves mm. we have to hear everything and but perceive we have to receive what comes into our minds yes. and even our actions let our let us stay peaceful with our neighbors politics will come and go every other five years but you see if you kill somebody consequences are dire mm. yeah so that, at that time there will not there will be no politicians to stand with you in courts of law you will be alone so i need uh, we need to encourage our people to be peaceful mm. as much as you support your candidates from any place in kenya you can support your candidates peacefully yeah. if they win they win if they lose they lose because even if they win you it might not really change your life much more than the other guys who are not supporting them absolutely when chips are down then you realize the, the, it is your neighbor who always helps you mm -hmm. and not the politician mm. so we need to be wise also yeah mm. hamisi from the governance aspect it is the part of the vote that will now help the common monainchi or the country as large to have proper leaders in office yes but uh, let's let's not start from governance i think the first step should be every kenyan can be a politician but mm. uh, not all politicians can be leaders so the first is to identify yourself as a politician and then go yeah. to the process that the leadership is different from just being a, a politician and yeah. then the moment you also be elected as a leader then you are entering uh, the area of governance because now you're going to govern people you're going to talk to people so there must be uh, is it call it induction, call it sensitization, call it anything, but there must be a process taking these people who are interested. Anybody who is interested to be a, a politician, there should be a process of inducting them. And of course, so that uh, when they're, they're being inducted as politicians, then leadership comes in and governance aspect. So that by the time they land into the job, they have some idea. Some will grow into it, some will have idea. It's the only profession that uh, I've known so far where people don't go to school. Uh, my, my colleague has spent so many years looking at the law and is, is still struggling. Those of us who have been in the leadership and we have spent all those years, we're still looking at the new concept that has, things are changing. The politicians, you can go from home to, to be the governor of mm -hmm. my, my county. Uh, with okay. no restriction because my people have elected me so there are those challenges that the country should uh, focus on and the system of police should be so the role of the party i think this is where the parties can come in i think that with the mission in this one and um, the role of the party the moment yes. somebody becomes your member are there regulations are there ideas is, is there training is there an induction into this party mm. stands on x or z all right. Governance All right. Um, absolutely. But Tabitha, you know, Amis is talking about the role of the party. But you see some of the party members or the party officials or party, party owners are not ready to lose certain politicians because they know they're the crowd pullers. And they need numbers at the end of the day. All right. That is uh, something um, that is very unfortunate, but mm. because... Uh, if Linturi can bring you, uh, let's say, two million voters or, or supporters to your camp, I think they are supporters of UDA, then uh, it will be um, a little bit of, uh, let's say, a, a, a bad thing to, to lose him. But then the, the big question is, even as we form the political party, whose interest do we always want to serve? It's the interest of the common one, I I think when you take the right step towards the right direction, by coming out straight and condemning this particular, you know, when you're condemning an act, you're not condemning an individual. Yeah. And then the Kenyans also, they will have more, more, more trust in you, and they will see that you stand for what is right. So, as much as you might lose, we might lose um, the injury. It doesn't mean that everybody that follows the injury as a Kenyan citizen, mm -hmm. they, they are supporting a school of thought. So, yeah. I mean, still, wherever the case that might um, appear to, you know, come forth from the situation, I me, mean, what I would want to see as responsible leadership and not political, um, political uh, plays here and there, I want to see that uh, the leadership of UDA and, and, and the leaders who are there come up very strongly and condemn some of these expressions. I, I also want to, to say that uh, there is nothing good um, in, a politi uh, in a politician or, or somebody that you support that is in the 
in the leadership space, especially in, in the politics of this country, when they cannot, you know, stand up and, and speak and, you know, uh, behave integral in public. I mean, mm. this takes us back to why, as a as Kenyans. I think uh, we are supposed to resume the second phase of um, uh, voter registration and also taking of ideas and things like those. As youth of this country, who make up uh, the 70% of this population, and we are the majority voters, we are tasked with uh, a very big, significant, um, uh, important role, ensuring that even as a whole country, not even the youth alone, we vote leaders on the basis of not how they can make us feel through the words but what they can bring us as impact. We want people that when even they stand, because I'm very sure that the international, you know, um, uh, world and even the media out there are watching this uh, very closely. And we want to see how our Kenyans react to this. And this shows that uh, these are the couple of leaders we elected to power. It, 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 somebody will argue, I had somebody saying that it shows what kind of people we are. So let us do better in this coming uh, general election. And um, it's also very sad the picture to say that these are the kind of people who are, who are not in support of. Uh, um, uh, uh, allow me just to bring this forward a bit. Adilio Laumoja, they were arguing that um, uh, this is a is, is is a move. They're not in support of. They're not in support of Kenyans being together. And what we are seeing basically is truly showing that it's not their business that the country is is going together. So um, we need to do better with our votes in this particular uh, coming election period. Yeah. All right. We need to do with our votes. That uh, that that sounds more optimistic and more strong. Uh, let me come to you, Akili, here, um, and let's leave, flip pages briefly. Um, you're saying that you're running for a particular seat at the Law Society of Kenya. Yes, yes. Uh, the term of the current council uh, ends in February, mm -hmm. so we need new leadership in office. Uh, members are dissolution, even in the Law Society. For the past two years, there's been no work going on, as you might know. There have been wrangles yeah. between the CEO and the president. Mm -hmm. So the good thing that both of them will be going home, they've done their bit, and a new office will come in, and we hope to serve members better. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, people are already out there campaigning for various uh, positions. Yeah. Because you know the society, sometimes it is the law society that people listen to. Sometime back in this country, when the society spoke, people listened. But you see, it, it has been losing that uh, allure slowly by slowly yeah. until when people say the law society is saying this, nobody wants to listen, but we want to take it back where it used to be. And it is very critical this time around. You mm. see, we have elections just in this uh, council, the next council, the elections will be conducted when the next council now is in office. Mm. And uh, most of the time it is the law society that comes in as the opposition. If there's yeah. no strong opposition, I do not know which people will be in the opposition but law society always tells the government that the king is naked. Mm. So in that regard, I also tend to serve members in that capacity, mm. and we hope it will be well with yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, you see, it's, it's interesting that, uh, you know, sometimes back we also talked about matters, law society here, you know, when there was, uh, you know, wrangles between the CEO and the president, but then now, Hamisi, you know, it's, it's important that uh, one of the contestants is here in studio, Wakili is here, but you know, when you put it that law society is now that torch that, you know, put that spotlight on every single uh, wrongdoing in the society. But that is not happening today. Perhaps we can just put it on the spot as, as the Mona Inch here. <laughs> yes, we want, you know, I, I was going to make a statement on uh, the possible way people can campaign is to focus on policies and mm. services. Yes. So, for example, if you do services, well, you're going to, to the law society, if you focus on those services that uh, are contemplated and are also in, in the books, mm -hmm. and focus these services, the, for example, you can say, when I, I get this job, I'll do this service, I'll be able to provide these services along better uh, provision, along, you know, inclusivity. You, you use these good words so that you can be able to provide the services should focus on the people and also your services should be focused on those services that are needed by the me either membership or the citizenry so mm -hmm. i advise my colleague uh, we want to see change at the lost sort of thing uh we have been seeing wrangles and also we have been seeing uh i don't know whether they're supposed to play neutral 
or uh, there are also party party members that are lost to sort of of Kenya. That that to me has has uh, removed some of my my energy to assess the law society. I think it's one of the institutions that should play neutral and also should play uh, watchdog uh, uh, as far as the government services are concerned. So I wish you all the best and I want you uh, to ask those people who are listening to vote you in quickly to go and change some of the things that are happening at the law society. But mm. focus on yeah. policies and services either to your membership also uh, now it is being used as a platform for for yeah. for election. I can see the <laughs> president is standing now. So I'm, all these are aspects yeah, yeah. and we must consider them. But I wish you all the best of luck, my dear brother. Talk of being used as a platform for political, you know, as a platform for political uh, tool. You know, the, the president is also vying for a political seat. Yeah. You yes. See, the, it was. It, it gives you that platform. Mm. Yeah. Uh, most of the people have been presidents and even former chairmen. Mm -hmm. They've gone to national office, yeah. So there's nothing wrong with that, except that I think they should have waited until their term ends, mm -hmm. yeah. Because uh, my friend is my very good friend, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Harvey. He has gone now to uh, seek uh, to lead the people of Westlands, mm -hmm. and we wish him well. Yeah. But he should still take care of the society. He is still our president. We do mm -hmm. not have another until his term ends. Mm -hmm. Actually, there seems to be a quagmire when we will have the elections because yeah. there are still court, uh, court, uh, court cases pending mm -hmm. that have not been determined because he was the chairman, the president was advised, was ordered by the court to call a meeting so that we can have the elections board set up. Mm -hmm. That has not happened. So even as we wait, we do not know what will become of it. And we yeah. I urge him, mm -hmm. as my friend and even as my president, to call that meeting so that the elections okay. can be. Um, now that you're on national television yeah. and the Law Society of Kenya represents the entire country, uh, I'll give you that advantage of just one minute, perhaps, to, <laughs> to you know, Tell them it's a campaign season and you're also campaigning. Tell, tell, uh, you know, supporters. Yeah, thank you so much for this chance. Yeah. Um, you see, uh, I want to encourage the members of the Law Society uh, not to be disillusioned. Yeah, the past two years has been um, mm. a mistake. The president has done his bit, the CEO, they are both going out, so we need to have a clean team. Mm. What I promise to do is not much. I will just ensure that systems work mm. so that when you apply for your PCs, you get them. If a lawyer is attacked unnecessarily, we come and defend you. But I want to urge the members to continue working hard in their own law firms, in their own uh, places of work, for those who work in the ODPP, mm. those who work uh, at uh, AGs, all lawyers across, even the ones in the judiciary, to continue working hard. The LSK case is supposed just to enable the processes. And uh, as I always say, servant leadership, somebody you can always reach to, mm somebody you can always entrust with your issues. And I promise that when we get to the council, we'll work smoothly with whoever else will be elected. You see, uh, the sense of humor is, is an art of leadership. Actually, that's how they know me, yeah. that I make them happy a lot if you follow me on social media. But not, I'm not just offering that. Mm. I'm also offering servant leadership. I know that I'm not better than all other advocates. Anybody else can vie. Mm. But if you give me this chance, you will not be disappointed yep. and kindly vote for me. And uh, when other candidates also come to your offices, mm. give them something small to yeah. energize them for the campaigns. It is not very easy. Uh, we've been throughout the country, but the reception is good. I hope that it will translate into votes. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. And we leave it at that. Thank you so much. We've Thank been you. speaking to Wakili Ochiangor, who is an advocate of the High Court. There you have them. Hamisi Boga, who is a governor's expert all the way from Mombasa, as well as Tabitha Ogutu, who is also a political analyst and a governor's expert from CIA. Gentlemen and lady, thank you so much for your valid company. Well, Always appreciated. And we are taking a break. When we come back, Jen still has got something to talk about. Stick around.